Hey guys, welcome back. This is Mr. Weinkoff with Embrace Tutoring and Educational Services, and today we'll be discussing the SAT Math Practice Test 8, questions, one, questions 31 through 38, section 4, and we will be going into the detailed explanations, but there will be a faster video as well posted. Question 31 states, there are two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen in one molecule of water. So one water will have two hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. How many atoms of hydrogen are there in 51 molecules of water, right? So how many atoms of hydrogen are there? Well, if I have 51 molecules of water, then my ratio here is going to be per one water, I have two atoms of hydrogen. So this is gonna be 51 times two, which all together should give me 102, and that should give me 102 atoms of hydrogen within water, so 102 should be my answer. Question 32, if x equals one in the equation above, what is the value of a? So I'm gonna immediately plug in, here I have my x minus one half a equals zero, I'm gonna plug in one minus one half a equals zero. In order to remove my fraction, I'm gonna multiply the entire equation by two, and I'm gonna now have two minus and two times the one half is gonna give me one. I have one a equals, well, this is still zero. I'm now going to subtract this negative two to get it to the other side. Here I have negative one a equals negative two. I'm gonna divide by negative one in order to isolate and solve for a. And when I do this, I get a equals two overall, and that should be my answer of what I wanna grid in. Okay, question 33, in the xy plane, the equations x plus 2y equals 10 and 3x plus 6y equals c represent the same line for the constant c. So here I have x plus 2y equals 10, and here I have 3x plus 6y equals c. What is the value of c? Well, how do I get this line to suddenly become equivalent to this line? I would need to multiply this entire line. And the reason I'm doing this is to try and just line up these values. If I have 3x plus 6y equals 30, and here if I continue to have 3x plus 6y equals c, well then these are gonna be the same. So c will equal 30 overall, right? c equals 30 when relating both of the equations together. For question 34, on April 18, 1775, Paul Revere set off on his midnight ride from Charleston to Lexington. If he had ridden straight to Lexington without stopping, he would have traveled 11 miles in 26 minutes. In such a ride, what would the average speed, and speed is equals to distance over time. The average here for average speed is just the total distance over the total amount of time, right? What would have his average speed have been to the nearest tenth of a mile per hour? Well, here I have my 11 miles, and this is per 26 minutes. Well, how do I go from miles per hour to miles per, right? Or how do I go from miles per minute to miles per hour? I've used a unit conversion of relating minutes to hours. I have minutes here down here in the bottom. I'm gonna continue to put minutes up here on the top. I know that for every 60 minutes, I have one hour, and I'm gonna do 11 times times 60 over 26, my minutes should cancel. My me, my units, my desired units should be in miles per hour, which tells me that I'm solving for the right expression. And 11 times 60 divided by 26 should give me, let's see, 660 divided by 26, I have 25.4 miles per hour should be his relative or his average speed overall. Question 35 gives me a large function, the graph of a function f defined by f of x equals negative one half uh, times parentheses x minus four squared plus 10 is shown in the xy plane above. And the function g, which is not shown, is defined by g of x equals negative x plus 10. So I have this expression, I have this expression. What is one possible value of a such that f of a equals g of a? Ah, I see, okay. Well. If I were to plug in my f of a equals into g of a, then I'm using a to plug into both of these expressions for x. So a is then going to get plugged into where x normally would be. 
And if I have f of a, this then gives me negative 1 half. And then here I have a minus 4 squared plus 10. And now I'm going to set this equal to my g of a. And my g of a is going to be negative a plus 10. Well, lucky me, I can immediately get rid of the, the 10s by just simplifying because 10 is on both sides. And, and I take those out. So now what I have is negative 1 half times a minus 4 squared equals negative a. Well, how do I eliminate this fraction here? If I were to multiply the entire equation by negative 2, purposely negative 2 to cancel this negative as well, and as well as this negative, then this fraction would cancel, and this would become a positive 1 times a minus 4 squared equals my negative 2 times negative a, which becomes 2a. Okay, so let's clean this up. Because right now what we have is a minus 4 squared equals 2a. If I were to subtract this 2a from both sides, then I would end up getting my a minus 4 squared minus 2a equals 0. And if I can fat or foil this out, then most likely I can actually combine these like terms. So if I did a minus 4 multiplied by a minus 4, then I end up getting a squared, right, a times a here, then a times negative 4, so minus 4a, and then I get minus 4 times, a. so here I have 4a minus 4a, and then my positive 16 of 4 times 4, right, my foil, my first, my outer, my inner, my last. And now I have a squared minus 8a plus 16 minus 2a equals 0. Right, I'm, bringing, I'm just bringing my 2a down. I can combine my like terms for minus 2a and minus 8a. And once again, what I end up getting is my a squared minus 10a and plus 16 equals 0. I have a negative middle value and I have a positive end value, which tells me that both of these values are most likely going to be negative because a negative times a negative gives me a positive at the end, but both of these negatives added together will end up being a negative. So what gives me, what two values give me 16 when multiplied, but when, when summed together give me negative 10, it will most likely be eight and two, right? Eight times two gives me 16 and eight plus two gives me 10. And I, here I now can solve and say a equals positive 8 or a equals positive 2. And to recap, the question is asking what is one possible value of, of a such that these two things are equal? Well, you're welcome to put in either one of these and put the, just simply put this in your grid in. But a equals 2 will be the answer to question number 35. For question 36, I have a figure here that looks to be a right triangle R, S, and T. In triangle R, S, and T above, point W not shown lies on R, T. So point W is going to be somewhere on this line. I'm just arbitrarily going to write this in. I'm going to say that W goes here. Right? Uh, what is the value of cosine R, S, W, so cosine of this angle here, minus sine of W, S, T? Okay, so so really, it's the it's these angles here. And by the way, these angles because they both sum up to be ninety degrees, we refer to these as complementary angles. And I have a feeling there's a rule that we can use uh, here. So what is the angle here? What is the value of cosine of R S W versus minus sine of W S T? Well, this question is actually fairly simplistic if you understand this rule. And the, the rule is this. If, if R, S, W, and W, S, T are complementary angles to each other, meaning that they add up to 90 degrees, and are complementary angles even, right, or complementary angles, and then the rule is the cosine of so the, the cosine of an angle 
is equal to the sine of its complementary angle. And we can break it down, we can go into all the specifics of Sokotel, but I would definitely encourage you to visit other videos in order to do this because there's a whole step process regarding Sokotoa. And we describe Sokotoa in a number of other videos, but the real way to do this problem is to identify this rule here. So if you're aware that it's really asking you to subtract these out together, right, and you're aware that they're actually equal, right, the cosine of one thing of RSW being a complementary angle minus the sine of the, of the WST, well, if you were to subtract them, you would actually get zero because of the fact that they're equal. So zero is gonna be your best answer for question 36 given this rule. Okay, so question 37 states, according to the table, how many more micrograms of penicillin are present in 10 milliliters of blood drawn from the patient five minutes after the injection than are present in eight milliliters of blood and drawn 10 minutes after the injection? So let's slide up to the table where we can see these values. And the first is that they want us to do five minutes after the injection, which is 152. And the second is going to be the 10 minutes after the injection. I also notice according to my table that this is in micrograms per milliliter. So these are each micrograms per one milliliter. That's, that's definitely something to note given the fact that my question slide back down and it says eight milliliters. Yes, there we go. That way we kind of have the units. So the way that we're gonna set up this problem is that we are going to have 152 micrograms per one milliliter. And I'm attempting to set, I'm getting this from my five minutes after the injection. And then I'm gonna compare this to my 10 minutes after the injection, right? And kind of set these values equivalent to the other Milliliter. So this is saying 152 micrograms is normally what is for the one milliliter. But I'm going to say if, I've, if I'm taking 10 milliliters of blood drawn from this patient five minutes after, I'm getting the 152 from the five minutes after and the amount of penicillin available. That's per one milliliter of blood though. And here I'm getting the 10 milliliters of blood drawn. So I'm going to cross these out and this, is, this becomes 1,520 micrograms. And this is micrograms of penicillin present within the 10 milliliters of blood. I'm referring to 10 minutes after the injection that these individuals have 118 micrograms per one milliliter, but there were drawing eight milliliters of blood for this, um, for this kind of specimen. So 118 micrograms times, and here I have eight milliliters of blood I'm going to cancel these units so I end up in my desired units of micrograms. And 118 times 8 is 944. The question, going back to it, says, according to the table, how many more micrograms? So this, this one should be larger. It is. And this is 1,520 micrograms minus 944. Right? How many more micrograms or what is the difference? 1,520 minus 944 should give me 576 micrograms more of what I have. So 576 will be my answer to question 37. Question 38, the penicillin concentration in micrograms per milliliter in a patient's bloodstream T minutes after the penicillin injection is modeled by this function here. Okay. If P approximates the values in the table to within 10 micrograms per milliliter, what is the value of B rounded to the nearest 10? Well, my data that I have available is, is back on the separate page, but, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set this up relatively quickly. That way you can get a general idea. Here I have P, um, P to, the, to T equals 200, and then B and T over 5. Well, I, I care about this because I actually want to solve for B. And if I can eliminate this exponent by using something easy with five, like for instance, if I if I can find something where it's like 10 over five or or B five over five, then this this would just become B squared or this become B to the first power, which is I want to get B by itself. And so I'm considering that with what values that I choose in my other table. So let's slide back to the table and see what we have. And it says that 
minutes after the injection. So I will most likely want to choose the five or the 10. In this case, I'm gonna choose the five. So that way I can get B to the first power as I was, as I was showing you before. And I'm gonna choose this, the minutes after the injection. So I'm gonna say that this is my 152 and minutes after the injection, this will be uh, five for my time. So T, this will be five. And my 152 altogether was actually gonna be my P to the T, right? This will be my Y. So here I have my expression PT equals 200 B to the power of T over five. I know now that using the values from the table that T equals five and that PT is going to equal 152. So I'm simply plugging them in here and I have my 152 equals 200 times B and this I'm gonna say five over five. And remember the whole reason I chose this was to simply be able to do this. All right, P to the first power, so five over five equals one. And now I have 200 B to the first power equals 152. If I were to divide both sides by 200, I would get B by itself to isolate. So let's do that. 152 divided by 200 equals B. And my answer choice should be relatively right around, let's say four fifths, right? So these are both able to be divided by five, right, divided by five. And that's my four fifths, which would also be right around 0 0.8 equals B. And I would plug this into my answer choices.